Hey everyone, Harris Rubenstein here for NBA. Now, we did the Eastern Conference trade block in our last video, so let's do the Western Conference trade block in this one. Obviously, the NBA trade deadline is right around the corner, so we're going to go from top to bottom in the Western Conference and pick one player that we think could be traded from each team. Let's start with Jacob Evans from the Golden State Warriors. Now, they don't really have too many needs, but I will say this. The Warriors were very interested in acquiring some help on the wing over the offseason. Now, this season, you know, Evans has been bad. He's Frankly, he's looked very overwhelmed coming out of Tulane. It's not a huge surprise. I mean, they've shuffled him, you know, between the G League and the NBA a lot. And we know that Alfonso McKinney has been nice as well. But I don't think the Warriors trust either McKinney or Jacob Evans in terms of actually being a functional player in an NBA Finals. Now, obviously, they'd shorten the bench, but if you do shorten the bench in the Finals, the only wings that the Warriors really have right now would be Kevin Durant and Andre Iguodala. So, I think they might take Evans and package him with a pick to try to upgrade on the wing. Ariza would have been a nice fit, but unfortunately, he's now in Washington not really giving a crap about anything. Let me know in the comments section below, do you think the Warriors need to make a trade I don't think they need to, but I certainly think they could use a little bit of help on the wing. Really, they re they only have Andre Iguodala and Kevin Durant on the wing right now for a team that really prioritizes three-point shooting. I think it could be helpful, but again, it's the Warriors, and they're going to win the NBA Finals anyway. It's just a matter about stacking the deck a little bit more. Let's talk about the Denver Nuggets, who have been a real problem this year, unless they obviously have to go against the Warriors when they got thrashed. Malik Beasley is a guy who I've been campaigning to get traded from Denver for a couple of months now. Not that I don't like Malik Beasley, I just don't think he's a good fit on this team. I don't really understand the sense that he makes and the minutes that they give him. He should, these minutes should be given to a better three-point shooter than him. I will say this though, if Isaiah Thomas comes in and disappoints, I think the Nuggets are going to take Malik Beasley and flip him into a shooter. If Isaiah Thomas is very good, then Malik Beasley might end up staying. But they got to get a little bit three, more three-point shooting out there on the wing. And also, the Nuggets are a little bit guard-heavy right now. You, what, Torrey Craig's had a really good season. Uh, Monty Morris has been really nice to them off the bench as well to go along with Gary Harris and Jamal Murray. They have a lot of great players in that backcourt. I think Malik Beasley just might get squeaked out. Let's go to Oklahoma City and talk about Terrence Ferguson, a very nice player. He's been really, he's been better this year. I don't want to say really good. He's been better this year than he was in uh, his first year in the NBA. Lightning quick, really long, extremely athletic, but he just, he can't shoot. He can't shoot, which uh, on a Thunder team who already has Russell Westbrook who can't shoot, you might want to get someone who's having a little bit better season in the shooting department. He's shooting a nice number from three. It's up to 39% this year. But overall, his field goal percentage just isn't that great. He's a nice player. He's long. He's good on the defensive side of the ball. But I think if the Thunder want a chance to win, I think they could flip him for a Wayne Ellington and actually get some three-point shooting on the roster. If you guys are looking to make money on the NBA or hell on the Super Bowl this year, there's only one place to do it, and that's with BetBSI. Head to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code NBA120 for 120% deposit bonus. What is that? It's this easy. You deposit 100 bucks, you put that promo code down, you get 120 bucks for free. Simple math, that easy. Head to chatsports.com slash bet and get your winning started today. Let's go to Portland. Let's talk about the Trailblazers. We have need, or we have been screaming at the Portland Trailblazers for years to get a third piece next to CJ McCollum and next to Damian Lillard. It just, they just haven't been able to do it. And now they stand at a point where if they don't do it, they might A, miss the playoffs, or B, just sink back down to irrelevancy like they were before they had Lillard and McCollum. I think they could flip Zach Collins for maybe a Kevin Love. Maybe a Blake Griffin. How about a Nikola Vucevic? Just flip him for a big that has legitimate NBA experience, but also has experience winning big-time games. 
And don't throw Yusuf Nurkic at me. He's an okay player. But if the Blazers want to take that big next step, they need to get an all-star caliber player down low. You can play Kevin Love and Yusuf Nurkic next to each other. Absolutely. Play Griffin the same way. Vucevic might be a little bit more difficult. But if you can get a pure power forward and put him on that team, they will succeed and hopefully can get, again, into one of the top three seeds in the NBA. I just don't see them being a title contender unless they make a move. Zach Collins is a nice young player. He's a great trade piece. I know the Blazers really want to hold on to their young guys, but... I mean, do you go for it? It might just not be worth it. I would trade Zach Collins for a better player right now. Let's talk about one of the funnier things that we didn't get a chance to discuss yesterday. So, obviously, Anthony Davis announced his trade request to start the day. Lost in the NBA media mix was that Marquise Chris also demanded a trade from the Houston Rockets, which is hilarious because he's awful. In fact, he's one of the worst five players in the the NBA and he's demanding a trade from a team that went to the Western Conference Finals last year. Now I understand wanting playing time, I understand being frustrated that you're out of the rotation, but Marquise Chris, you couldn't even get playing time in Phoenix. What makes you think you're going to get playing time anywhere else? Just accept it man, you're kind of a bust, you never learned how to shoot, you just didn't end up being that good. But sure, let's all just demand trades. Let's talk about Brian Forbes with the, with the San Antonio Spurs. Now, this one hurts me a little bit because Forbes is actually a pretty good player. He's a good three-point shooter. He, you know, he's a good defender as well. Nice backup off the bench for the Spurs. But he just the Spurs have a lot of players at that guard position that I think that they need to move off of. We've jump, jumped around a ton. You know, Derek White's played a lot of minutes this year. Lonnie Walker's just come back. As well, we know Jonathan Murray is going to come back next season. I think Brian Forbes is going to be a guy who could get moved off of this year. Maybe they ship him for another big down low. Maybe they package him together to get a really good backup point guard, maybe another veteran. But for now, I just don't think that Forbes is a long-term option for the Spurs. He could end up getting moved in some sort of three-team trade at the deadline this year. Let's talk about Ricky Rubio with the Utah Jazz. The Utah Jazz have continued to make me look very, very dumb this year, and I do not appreciate that at all. I chose the Utah Jazz to go to the Western Conference Finals this year, and they have responded by coming out to an incredibly cold start, and then allowing Donovan Mitchell to carry them, and then remembering that they have nobody else on their team who can score. It's kind of an issue in the NBA where there are more points being scored now than literally any other time in NBA history. you got to be able to score, and Ricky Rubio just hasn't gotten it done for the Utah Jazz the past two years. He's a nice player, he's a good defender, but if the Jazz can upgrade their point guard spot, they should do it instantly. Can you imagine what this Jazz team would be like if they were able to get Mike Conley? Who boy! If you can move off of Ricky Rubio and get an elite level point guard in there, you should do that in a second. Another guy I want to talk about is Avery Bradley. I understand that Doc absolutely loves him. I know that he's one of his favorites, but he's terrible. Remember when we talked about player efficiency rating and how it's the war of the NBA? We're going to go back through this lesson. I told you guys that the average NBA player efficiency rating is 15. You know what Avery Bradley's was the last time we talked about him? It was 7. Guess what it is now? 5. His player efficiency rating is five. One of the worst 20 players in basketball. Yet he is getting played important minutes in almost every single Clipper game. Remember how we talked about in the start of the year that what made the Clippers so good was that they didn't play bad players and that all their guys were relatively good NBA pros? Yeah, they're starting to move away from that, and that's why they started to really tank the past couple of weeks. They got to move on from Avery Bradley and get a player in there or at least start somebody else. I do not understand their infatuation with a guy, one of the worst offensive players in basketball the last five years. His offensive rating is swirling around the 80s. It's awful. They got to move on from him, trade him away, bench him, whatever it is. You got to get a better option in there than Avery Bradley right now. Let's talk about the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, this Western Conference trade block could obviously not be complete without Brandon Ingram 
being on it. Mostly because if the Lakers want any chance of trading for Anthony Davis, Brandon Ingram is going to have to be involved. Now, I could have put any of the young guys up there. I could have put Kyle Kuzma on there. Could have put Lonzo Ball. Could have put Josh Hart. Hell, could have put Avika Zubak. But Brandon Ingram's our guy that we're going with today. He just hasn't taken that step this year that you've been looking for. His points per game is about the same from last year. His field goal percentage is down. His three-point shooting percentage is in the tank. He shot almost 39% from three this year. He's barely sitting above 30% right now. I just don't think he has altered his game enough to play next to LeBron. And I know he's 21, and I know it's kind of unfair, but... I remember a great young player that the Cleveland Cavaliers drafted by the name of Dion Waiters. You guys remember when Dion Waiters was drafted by the Cavs and then LeBron came in and they traded him away four months later because he just didn't fit next to LeBron? Yeah, we're seeing that again. And this time, Brandon Ingram is going to be the one that's on his way out. But it will likely be 4-1 Anthony Davis. So I don't know from you guys, will the Lakers trade for Anthony Davis? Could be at the deadline. Could be this summer, could be really at any time. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys think the Lakers will make a move for Anthony Davis. If you guys want to make some money on the NBA this year, head to chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code NBA120 for a 120% deposit bonus. You're just giving out money. You're just giving out free money to you guys this year. Again, that promo code is NBA120. Use bet the aside to make some fat stacks on sports this year. All right, let's move off the Lakers and let's move into the Sacramento Kings. Now, the Kings have started to falter as of recent, which is to be expected. You know, they're a good team. They have a lot of talent, but they just aren't going to quite get over that hump this year. Now, Amon Shumpert is a guy that they could move off of. He's a good expiring contract, so he'd be a good asset to move off of. The Kings do not have a first-round pick this year. Now, I am not suggesting... I'm not suggesting by any means that Amon Shumpert is worth anything close to a first-round pick. In fact, I'd be surprised if Amon Shumpert was worth a high second-round pick. But I think Amon Shumpert is going to be a guy that the Kings try to mix up in a three-team trade to try to end up with a late first-round pick or try to end up with a future pick. Shumpert's a guy that you're going to see get into trade talks a lot because of that expiring deal. I just don't think his tenure in Sacramento is for much longer. Let's talk about the Minnesota Timberwolves and Derrick Rose. He has had such an unlikely great year. I think the best part about this season for Derrick Rose, for me at least, is just how much he has changed his game this year to acclimate to the modern NBA. Now, he still has the great acrobatic plays underneath the basket. And sure, he doesn't have the same, you know, athleticism and explosion that he used to. But his three-point shooting numbers are way up. His field goal percentage is way up. His true shooting percentage is also way up. Good for you, Derrick Rose. He has literally changed his entire game to fit the modern day NBA. And I think that those kinds of players, you know, whether it's like a Wayne Ellington or even a Mike Conley or a Marcus Saul who've started shooting more threes, those guys need to be get a lot of acclaim, excuse me, for changing their games in the middle of their careers. Shout out to you, Derrick Rose. I hope you end up getting sent to a contender and actually can go on a run for an NBA Finals. Again, Come on, Lakers. Get their grows on the team. That'd be a lot of fun to see. I actually think it'd be a good fit as well. Let's go to Dallas. I guess down here in Dallas. Now, I'm sure a lot of you were expecting me to put Dennis Smith Jr. on this list, as did our producer, Brett. I didn't want to put him on there just because, you know, there's a lot of ego in the NBA trade circles. A lot of ego. And no one has more ego in terms of an NBA owner than Mark Cuban. And I just can't see... The Mavericks moving on from a first-round pick that's going to be in the dunk contest only a year and a half into his career. I just can't see his ego letting him do it, but I can totally see him letting go of Wesley Matthews. He is a perfect expiring contract that they can flip into a pick. They don't have a first-round pick this year. Maybe they can flip him to a contender to get a late first, you know, maybe someone like the Celtics or, or you know, a team like the Lakers or even the Warriors, who we know are looking for a wing. Just throwing some, some tomatoes at a wall and see what sticks here. But they got to get off this Wesley Matthews contract. It's a good expiring for them, but I think they can get a really nice asset for that contract if they choose to move him to a smaller team. All right, let's talk about Anthony Davis. 
we, the really only question right now around Anthony Davis is whether or not he gets moved at the deadline this year. We know that he wants to go to the Lakers. There have been reports all morning that, oh, there's a, there's a statement coming out from Clutch Sports and Anthony Davis basically saying he's not going to sign an extension with any team that isn't the Lakers. Didn't, didn't we just go through this? No, no, excuse me. This is the third time now that we've gone through this. We went through this with Paul George two years ago. We went through this with Kawhi this offseason. And now here we are with Anthony Davis. I'm only going to sign with the Lakers. Yeah, that's worked out so great the last two times that it's happened. Now, this is a little bit more loaded on it because of the whole clutch sports thing and whatever. But the great part about this is the amount of leverage that the Pelicans still have. I know that everyone wants to see him on the Lakers within the next two weeks. If I'm the Pelicans... I sit back and relax. I don't have to trade Anthony Davis right now. I can save him. Sure, he plans on playing out the season, and him ending up with an injury would be pretty bad for the Pelicans, but if I'm the Pelicans, I do not trade Anthony Davis until July 1st. Why? Because at that point, you can get the best offer from the Knicks. You can get the best offer from the Celtics. You can get the best offer from just about every team in the NBA and also the Lakers' best package as well. That's not going to change between now and July. So I think that Anthony Davis will end up getting traded at some point, but I don't think that it's going to end up being at the deadline. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. What team will Anthony Davis be on next season? Only, I want to say, three options really for this question, Celtics, the Lakers, and the Knicks. But if you have some fun options and some fun trades as well, let me know what you guys think Anthony Davis could go for on your favorite team. All right, let's talk about Mike Conley with the Memphis Grizzlies. We talked about him a couple times now over our past couple of shows. It is time to hashtag blow it up for the Memphis Grizzlies. And the only real question is, do they trade Mike Conley, Marcus Gasol, or both? I think Mike Conley is the guy that they're going to end up moving off of. With that three years and $30 million a year left on his contract, he is the guy that they desperately need to get rid of. You want to keep Marcus Saul and you trade him in the summer with that one year left on his contract, that's not a terrible option. But Mike Conley right now with three years left on his deal, he could do a lot of great things for a title contender. I would have loved to seen him on Indiana if Oladipo didn't go down. I still would love to see him in Detroit if Blake Griffin decides to stay. I think there are a lot of really fun places that Mike Conley can end up going that would make him you know, a, a, an instant, an instant threat to win a title. Hell, Milwaukee would be a great spot for Mike Conley as well. So it's time to blow it up for the Grizzlies. The only question is, who do they send into the fire first? Let's go to our last team here, the worst team in the Western Conference. It's obviously the Phoenix Suns. And the man that they should trade this year? How about Jamal Crawford? Let the man go chase a title. Send him to the Warriors. Let him play one minute in game four when the Warriors are up 30 points on the Raptors or the Celtics or whatever poor team that they end up facing this year. Get Jamal Crawford a ring. He has enough six man of the year trophies. He has enough, uh, you know, acclaim as Jay Crossover. Get that man a title. Send him to the Nuggets. Send him to the Warriors. Send him to a team that he has a legitimate shot of winning an NBA Finals with. One last time through the Western Conference standings for you before we head out. Again, one more time, head to chatsports.com slash bed. Use that promo code NBA120. The Super Bowl is only days away. Put down some money now at chatsports.com slash bed and make some fat dough when the Patriots take on the Rams on Sunday.